Starting a woodworking hobby is super exciting, but it could also be kind of overwhelming, especially if you've been watching a lot of YouTube videos. We see people using all kinds of tools, usually without a lot of explanation, or we just see an endless stream of influencers trying to sell us tools. My goal with this video is to give you an overview of all the tools and supplies you'll need to get started with a woodworking hobby. Keep in mind, this list is focused on traditional power tool woodworking, the type of woodworking practice by over 90% of all home-based hobbyists. In other words, this video will not be covering digital tools such as CNC's or laser cutters. Likewise, I won't be including tools for hand tool enthusiasts, things like hand planes, chisels, and hand saws. I won't be discussing specific brands or model numbers or including any affiliate links in the description. I'm not trying to sell you tools in this video. This is an honest attempt to help brand new woodworkers understand what you'll need. It's fun and it's educational to research your own tools and figure out what best suits your space, your skill level, and your budget. I do have a list that I update every month containing a list of all the basic tools you'll need to get started for less than a thousand dollars. This one has specific tools and models that I recommend. This list, my tool list, has been a mission of mine for the past five years now and it gets it gets more and more challenging all the time, but so far I've been able to keep it under a thousand dollars. Check it out, it's free over at mytoollist.com. But whenever I talk about tools, I like to mention this, buy used tools. It's amazing some of the great deals you can find on the secondhand market. Craigslist, Facebook Marketplace, garage sales, flea markets, and estate sales are all great places to search. The advantage to buying used tools is that you can often get a lot more bang for your buck. Most power tools are durable and will function fine for years. Finally, I'm not a fanboy for any particular brand. Most modern power tool brands manufacture tools that are comparable with each other. You don't have to be loyal to any one brand when buying tools. I and mean, yes, whenever I mention this, the one comment some people like to say is that sticking with one brand is good because all of the batteries will be compatible. I mean, Honestly, having different batteries for different brands isn't that big of a challenge in a hobby shop. You just grab the matching battery from the charger and drop it into the tool. Having all matching batteries sounds, sounds to me more like a marketing talking point than a major problem. So get whatever tools you like. The table saw is really the heart of any workshop. You can probably get by without one for a while, maybe just using a miter saw or circular saw, but once you get a table saw, a world of possibilities opens up to you. This single tool will give you the ability to bring precision into your projects and help you realize whatever design you want to build. There's rarely a project that doesn't run through my table saw at some point. With a table saw, you can make rip cuts, cross cuts, and resaw cuts. And by making or buying special jigs and attachments, you can make countless more types of cuts and special joints. It's a lot of fun. The only thing a table saw can't cut is a curve. A table saw is also the most intimidating tool for new woodworkers. It's loud and it's aggressive. Whenever you hear about somebody losing a finger in woodworking, it's almost always on a table saw. But with proper understanding of safety procedures and approaching it with respect, you can operate a table saw for a lifetime without any injuries. If you want next level protection, you can look into saws that have flesh sensing technology. They're a lot more expensive, but they give a lot of people enough peace of mind to get them started in woodworking, and that's a good thing. One other thing, in my style of woodworking and in the courses that I teach, I rely heavily on rabbit joints, grooves, and dados. I highly recommend getting a stack of dado blades. A miter saw is probably the most borderline tool on this list. If if you have a table saw already, a miter saw might seem redundant since you can make cross cuts on a table saw, but there's a few reasons why I like to have both. First, if you need to cut something thick, say a 4x4 four four post for making a fence, it's a lot easier to chop on a miter saw. It would be really awkward to push 
that post through a table saw, it, the blade itself might not even lift high enough to cut it through in one pass. And I think that's the real benefit of a miter saw. Unlike a table saw, the workpiece stays stationary while you move the saw through it. A uh, miter saw is great for cutting heavy, long, or bulky boards. Second, a miter saw is fast. It's easy and quick to cut a board without any special setup. Plus, if you have a bunch of boards you need to cut all at the same length, it's easy to batch them out using a stop block. Another benefit is that it lets you make cuts while your table saw is already set up for some other type of cut. There are projects you can make just using a miter saw and of course cutting miters is simple and fast. Basically I think there's something really nice about having a saw ready at a moment's notice for making a quick cut without fussing around with setting anything up. It's just always ready to go. When I need to make curved cuts I always reach for my jigsaw. A jigsaw is a vastly underrated tool. You can use it to cut curves and holes as well as straight cuts and beveled cuts. Plus, it's a pretty inexpensive tool. The only limitations are the thickness of the board you need to cut, which can't be any greater than the reach of the blade. And there's a certain level of finesse you'll have to learn to prevent the blade from flexing. The only upgrade from a jigsaw would be a bandsaw, but save that purchase for somewhere down the line. That's a really big investment. Even then, you'll still need to keep your jigsaw for cutting holes, something you can't do with a bandsaw. A circular saw isn't a tool you'll use for finish woodworking. It's more of a tool for prepping wood for other tools or for bigger construction projects that don't require a high level of precision. Say if you're framing out a shed, a circular saw is a great tool. As part of my workflow, I usually break down a full sheet of plywood with my circular saw into pieces that are small enough and to manage on my table saw. There are also some boards I need to cut that won't fit on a table saw, so I use my circular saw. If you use a straight edge, you can actually get pretty good results with it. Like a table saw, it's only for making straight cuts. Don't try to cut curves with a circular saw. A drill and driver may be the two most useful tools for anyone to own. Even if you're not a woodworker, I always recommend getting both. A drill for boring holes and an impact driver for driving screws. You can certainly drive screws with just the drill alone, but Trust me when I tell you how much better an impact driver is. In fact, they're usually sold as a pair. Plus, having both improves your workflow. You can quickly drill holes and drive screws without having to switch back and forth between bits. Be sure to get a set of drill bits and driver bits to go with these. These come in all different assortments and kits and sizes. One task you'll need to perform on every project you make is sanding. Sanding is necessary for shaping and smoothing wood and is used when applying some finishes. It can be a laborious, monotonous task, but one you just don't want to slack on. To make sanding easier and more efficient, there are all kinds of power sanders, but the best general purpose sander is the random orbit sander. A random orbit sander spins, but it also moves around in a random motion. This prevents it from leaving circular scratch marks on your wood. It uses round sandpaper that attaches like Velcro. I suggest starting out with three levels of abrasive, 60 grit, 120 grit and 220 grit, coarse, medium, and fine, but it wouldn't hurt to buy some other levels of grit. Sanding discs are your first woodworking consumer consumable, something that you're gonna need to replace on a fairly regular basis. One thing new woodworkers are always surprised by is the sheer amount of sawdust that's created. It'll get everywhere, all over everything, including yourself, really fast. Try to wrangle it as much as you can. A shop vac will be your first line of defense. Not only is it used to clean your shop and work surfaces, but you can and should attach it to any power tool that has a dust collection port. I never run my table saw without my shop vac hooked to it. And trust me on this one, vacuum early and vacuum often. Get control of sawdust. It makes a huge mess. It'll just track all over your house and, and it's harmful to breathe. Oh, and while you're at it, get a broom and use it often. There's an old woodworking saying that you can never have enough clamps. And there's a lot of truth to that, but you don't 
don't need a whole lot to get started. There's just like a billion different types of clamps, probably more gimmicky versions than any other tool. Just don't get overwhelmed by all the choices. I suggest getting two 24 inch bar clamps. If you can swing it, get a couple of 36 inch clamps too. I'm a big fan of pipe clamps also. This is a very affordable way to go. You buy half inch or three quarter inch black pipe. These come in all different lengths or you can have them cut and threaded to any length at some hardware stores. And then you get these pipe clamp fixtures that you can swap out to whatever length of pipe you're using. You can save money by not having to buy the business parts for every clamp, just the different lengths of pipes. I'm also a big fan of strap clamps and I suggest every beginner get one. It's very useful for gluing up picture frames, boxes, or just about anything that needs to be squared up, which is most projects. You're gonna need a measuring tape. I don't recommend anything longer than 12 or 16 feet for woodworking. You might need a longer tape, say a 50 footer for big construction projects if you're landscaping or building a large structure, but still get the small one. A big bulky tape is just a pain to use for small projects, which is most projects. A combination square is used for squaring things up, drawing cut lines and measuring. An 18 inch square is a good one to have. I also like to have a framing square. It's very useful for lining things up, drawing straight lines and squaring up large projects such as bookcases, tables or whatever. Probably the second most surprising discovery that new woodworkers make is that we rarely use nails to assemble projects. Glue is king. Wood glue is stronger than the wood itself and will hold anything together when used correctly. I recommend Type Bond 2 wood glue. I've been using it for decades and it's never failed. We may not use nails, but screws are pretty common for certain projects, especially shop fixtures and jigs. It's worth getting a box of inch and a quarter screws. Get these star head screws. They cost a little bit more, but they're totally worth it. They drive so easily. In addition to sanding discs for your random orbit sander, it's a good idea to always have on hand sheets of sandpaper. There are some things that are just easier to sand by hand or areas that a power sander can't reach. You can start with a pack of assorted grits. Keep in mind for woodworking, there's rarely any reason to sand finer than 220 grit. Chances are not all your power tools will reach an outlet. So make sure you have an extension cord, a 14 gauge, 15 foot cord works well for me. Keep yourself protected by getting safety glasses, hearing protection, and a filter mask. I like these N95 masks with active carbon filters. Be sure to check out my award-winning safety video before you start any woodworking. After you've been woodworking for a while and completing a number of projects, you'll start to naturally discover things that you wanna build that would be much easier to build with certain tools. Try to avoid buying tools just for the sake of buying tools and buy a tool because you have an actual genuine need for it. A lot of woodworkers might question why I didn't include a router in this list. And to be honest, it's one of those tools that could very easily fit into a basic tool set. But ultimately, I don't feel that it's absolutely necessary. In fact, in the Weekend Woodworker course, we don't use one at all. I would say that after all your basic tools, a router should probably be your first next level purchase. I'm also a big proponent of pocket hole joinery. I find it the easiest and most efficient way to join certain projects together. I recommend getting a pocket hole jig. There are all kinds of bench top sanders that are useful. I'd say my disc sander and my spindle sander are the most useful. At some point you might want to consider a drill press for boring more accurate holes than you can get with a handheld drill and maybe get an air compressor with a brad nailer. Plus, there's other things you can do with a compressor. It's just nice to have an air compressor around. A planer is a useful tool for making boards as thin as you want, and a jointer is useful for milling your own boards perfectly square. I mentioned the bandsaw before, which is also a very useful tool, but again, it's a pretty big investment that takes up a fair amount of space. I no longer have any of these three tools and I'm able to make really cool projects without them. 
woodworking has more to do with you and your creativity than the tools you use. Ultimately, my best advice is to begin with a very modest tool collection. Even if you have a lot of money just burning a hole in your pocket, try to resist the urge to just start buying up tools without really understanding what you need or what specific features you want on those tools. And don't forget, if you're looking for a step-by-step -step approach to learning woodworking, check out my online course, The Weekend Woodworker. You'll be actually building your very first project this weekend. No experience necessary. Head over to weekendwoodworkercourse.com. Thanks for watching.